so hey guys uh, in this video we will discuss about the most important part of dentistry that is the local anesthesia and in this specifically we will discuss about the complications of local anesthesia uh, so we have two types of complications uh, we have local complications and the systemic complications local one that occurs at the site of injection and the systemic includes the overdose that is the toxicity of LA and it includes allergy and the psychogenic reactions. Psychogenic reactions. So these all are the local complications of LA. So uh, we will discuss it by one by one. So firstly com coming to the needle breakage. So needle breakage you have to remember like needle breaks at the hub region most commonly it breaks at the hub region there are some causes of needle breakage like if the doctor ex excessively bends the needle into soft tissue it can uh, break down at the hub region or if there is sudden unexpected movement sudden unexpected movement by the patient like in the case of a child or when the forcefully needle contacts with the bone forcefully needle contacts with the bone so these are the images like you can see in the opg uh, this is a needle uh, that is broken at the hub region so uh, how to manage if some uh, somewhere like you're giving the la uh, supposedly inferior alveolar nerve block and your needle breaks at the hub region so if it is visible you can remove it by the margils forcep or hemostate by grabbing the proximal end of the needle so there are some precautions that you can take to avoid this kind of complications like do not do not bend excessively the needle into soft tissues and uh, try not to use the short needles as in case of inferior alveolar nerve block and be aware of the patients like child that can uh, that you can like uh, expect some movements unwanted movements so coming to the second complications so we have prolonged anesthesia so what is prolonged anesthesia it is also called as a paresthesia so prolonged anesthesia is paresthesia so what is paresthesia so paresthesia is somewhat like the pain or the altered sensation that occurs uh, that occurs beyond the expected duration it also include pain there is no such like this only altered sensation it also include the pain so paresthesia it may include the pain or it may include altered sensation but both beyond the expected duration of the anesthesia so it is called as a paresthesia or the prolonged anesthesia so causes uh, what are the causes of paresthesia uh, so if we deposit la near nerve that uh, contains near nerve that la contains any sterilizing solution or kind of alcohol for sterilization uh, so what happens is that there can occur the edema around the nerve so that can uh, have the pressure over the nerve so it can damage the nerve or we can directly if we directly damage the nerve sheet if we directly damage the nerve sheet so we can have the paresthesia so paresthesia may be temporary or the permanent so but the problem associated with the paresthesia in the case of the local anesthesia is that soft tissue injury can occur self inflicted soft tissue injury can occur soft tissue injury like biting of lip and cheek by the patient so so the next complication is facial nerve paralysis that is very important facial nerve paralysis most commonly is a complication of inferior alveolar nerve block so uh, inferior alveolar nerve block 
the most common complication is the facial nerve paralysis so the cause is when we put la or inject la into the capsule of parotid gland here the terminal branches of facial nerve lies so we injured the branches of facial nerve so there may be facial nerve paralysis most commonly it is transient and it is unilateral there is an important sign that we find that is called as a bell sign it is seen in bell's palsy facial palsy so what is bell sign uh, it is like when patient tries to close eyes when patient tries to close his or her eyes it roll upwards eyeball roll upwards so this is called as a bell sign so it is important sign that is seen in the facial nerve paralysis and uh, so that's why we say that in inferior alveolar nerve block the bone contact is must so that we don't go our needle don't go beyond the expected site so bone contact is must so how to manage the uh, facial palsy firstly it is temporary so reassurance to the patient or immediate treatment if we have to give so we can give iv corticosteroids or we can give artificial tears artificial tears and botox injection it can also occur due to the another nerve blocks but it is most commonly occur due to the inferior alveolar nerve blocks so coming to the next one we have ocular problems ocular problems most commonly like it is diplopia can occur diplopia that is the double vision most commonly it is a complication of psa that is posterior superior alveolar nerve block uh, it is a rarest kind of complication of psa so next complication we have trismus again very important to discuss in detail like trismus is uh, that is inability when the patient is unable to open the mouth okay so this is trismus so when we put la into the muscle most commonly which muscle medial pterygoid medial pterygoid so trismus occurs due to la so it is again a complication of inferior alveolar nerve block so la solution when we put into the muscle it what it causes it causes a necrosis of the exposed muscle fibers so when the muscle fibers uh, uh, occurs a necrosis of exposed muscle fiber so there is no stretching of muscle there is no contraction of muscle fibers so patient is unable to open the mouth so muscle is not performing its function properly so another cause of the trismus if there is hemorrhage if there is hemorrhage or any low grade infection any low grade infection after injection so what can uh, occur so due to the indirectly indirectly due to low grade infection and the hemorrhage the trismus can occur uh, when we repeatedly when we repeatedly or we put multiple times needle inside the soft tissue the muscle can damage uh, there is ev with every insert this is important like with every insert of needle into tissue it produces some damage it produces some damage so what can cause it can destroy or it can like uh, it can cause necrosis of muscle muscle fibers so most commonly involved muscle is medial pterygoid so trismus can occur so we another cause we have is excessive la deposition when we excessively give the la excessive dose of la it can cause distension of tissues distension of tissues indirectly can cause the trismus 
so prevention of prismis how we can prevent this complication use of the sterile sharp needles use of sterile and sharp needles follow the aseptic technique follow the aseptic technique a traumatic insertion of needle a traumatic insertion of needle and gain proper knowledge of anatomy gain proper knowledge of anatomy and that of the technique so we can avoid the multiple insertions uh, so hence the we can avoid the prismis so use the minimum efficacious amount of the la that is required to produce the in effect so how can we management how can we manage if uh, somehow prismis occurs after local anesthesia so we can give analgesic or mr that is muscle relaxant we uh, give the flexon and we can tell patient to have warm saline rinse or heat therapy heat therapy or physiotherapy or sugarless chewing gums sugarless chewing gums coming to the next complication we have uh, uh, so the next one uh, the next complication we have is soft tissue injury soft tissue injury so most commonly soft tissue injury occurs in children the reason is that the our soft tissues remain anesthetized more than that of the palpal anesthesia so that's why uh, the tissues are anesthetized and the patient uh, doesn't know like this do, don't have the sensory sensation so what it causes is soft tissue anesthesia remains longer duration and there occurs a lip biting or the cheek biting post la so it is kind of self inflicted injury so we can prevent it by placing the cotton rolls between the lips and that of the teeth coming to next important complication that is a hematoma like the perfusion of blood outside that of the blood vessels so it is called as a hematoma most commonly it is a complication of psa the most commonly com uh, the most common complication of psa is hematoma so hematoma is usually transient like for 7 to 21 days uh, but due to the aesthetic reason a uh, reason the patient is worried and uh, psa a uh, common block that causes a hematoma and uh, it occurs when the needle is inserted into the blood vessels when needle is inserted into the blood vessels so hematoma hematoma can also occur due to the inferior alveolar nerve block but how to like diagnose like it is caused by psa or inferior alveolar if there is a extra oral swelling psa causes a perfuse uh, hematoma Uh, so if there is a extra oral swelling it is uh, due to psa and if there is intraoral swelling or no extra oral swelling it is due to the inferior alveolar nerve block so what are the problems associated with the hematoma it includes pain it includes trismus it can cause swelling or the aesthetic problems also it causes discoloration of the skin or the face so these are the problems that are associated with the hematoma formed with due to the psa why it forms like which blood vessels or which uh, vein or blood uh, blood vessel include in the psa that causes a perfuse hematoma so it is the pterygoid plexus of vein most commonly there is pterygoid plexus of vein that is responsible for the hematoma pterygoid plexus of veins but it can also occur 
due to the maxillary artery when we insert the needle or the deposit LA into the maxillary artery it can also occur but the most commonly it is associated with pterygoid venous plexus so how to manage if there is hematoma so we have immediately we have to give the pressure packs we have to give the ice packs or the cold pressure packs for the two minutes at the site of hematoma subsequently to manage hematoma we have to prescribe the patient analgesic or the anti-inflammatory drugs and we have to prescribe not to give heat not to give heat because heat causes vasodilation so that's why not to uh, apply the heat or the any. next complication is the pain pain uh, occurs due to faster deposition of LA the ideal rate is 1 ml per minute or we if we use needle with barbs uh, if we use dull needle uh, these are the like uh, causes of the pain on injection so what are the problems associated if the pain occurs due to injection so firstly patient is already anxious so if the pain on injection occurs uh, the patient is already anxious and he or she is going to be anxious during the whole procedure so sudden unexpected movement can occur due to pain sudden unexpected movement can occur due to pain on injection next complication we have burn, burn burning sensation or the burn sensation during injection so again uh, due to the fast fast deposition of la the patient can experience burning sensation or the most common cause is like ph of the la solution pH is a uh, pH of the LA solution is slightly acidic so that's why patient experiences some kind of burning sensation during injection uh, because uh, and uh, there can be like if the LA solution is uh, uh, sterilized or stored in the cold temperature and we are not normalizing the temperature of LA solution and we just directly giving the LA so patient can also uh, feel the burning sensation or the rapid injection is another cause uh, that also causes a burn during injection and the next complication we have necrosis or slowing of tissues or necrosis what, what happens is that it most commonly occurs in the case of greater palatine block uh, GP uh, because we can give the LA we give the LA and it contains the vasoconstrictor it contains the vasoconstrictor so prolonged deposition can cause the ischemia of the tissues and subsequently necrosis if long time ischemia occurs so there can be necrosis or in GP there occurs the necrosis or the palatal perforation of the palate due to LA uh, the most common cause is like LA that is con consisting of the vasoconstriction it causes a constriction of the blood vessels that leads to ischemia and prolonged ischemia can cause the necrosis so it occurs uh, because there occurs a epithelial desquamation and it can also cause the ischemia of gingival soft tissue so these were the compli local complications of LA uh, so here we have uh, some immediate and the delay type of complications uh, so the immediate type of complications are the needle breakage pain on injection or the burning sensation of injection the rest are the delayed ones so uh, now coming to the next part that is the systemic complications and the most important systemic complications of local anesthesia uh, so we will discuss about the concept of the over dosage that is the toxicity of LA so when we infuse any drug into our body when we infuse any drug we have two types of effects one that is desirable and another one that is undesirable that we don't want or desirable that we want and the expected part of the uh, drug 
so over dosage of any drug can lead to the toxic reaction can lead to the toxic reaction if we give any drug beyond the excess dose or beyond the expected dose or we give a drug in excess it can lead to a toxic reaction and it can influence the systems of the body like our CNS most commonly it involves CNS and CVS but it can also include respiratory and another systems of the body so it causes the toxicity so this is the toxicity of LA when we deposit the LA solution uh, excessively or we give the over dosage of LA so it is always dose related we have to understand over dosage is dose related and over dosage or toxicities is not related to the allergy allergy is somewhat different and the toxicity is somewhat different so allergy is not dose related we can't say that it is dose related it is just a type of hypersensitive reaction and dose related like it is uh, in the hands of the operator or the uh, dentist so over uh, dose related overdoses is always dose related so like if we give the high dose high dose of LA so LA concentration in blood levels increases so more the concentration more sphere will be the reaction so allergy is a hypersensitive state and it is like kind of anaphylaxis that is non dose related uh, so we will discuss about the toxicity of LA in detail toxicity of LA so like the example given in malamate uh, so we if we infuse 36 milligram of LA so there will be absorption in the blood and subsequently when the absorption occurs there is a removal of this LA occur by the liver by via biotransformation so this is a cycle going but if we give the high amount of LA the liver is the drug is not going into the biotransformation and not extracted excreted from the body so it can lead to the toxicity of the reaction it can lead to the toxicity of the reaction like you can understand with the help of a graph like this is a anesthetic agent in the concentration of anesthetic agent in blood and this is time and this is a particular point of the over dosage in the blood level this need uh, this concentration you need to have the over dosage or the toxicity so like if the anesthetic level remains like that and it subsequently biotransformed and excreted from the bo body so we don't have the over dosage like this particular amount of dose or the level or the threshold we need to have the toxicity of the agent or any drug so what are the causes of the toxicity in case of local anesthesia like if the greater concentration of drug greater concentration of LA or drug like we already discussed greater concentration will lead to the more blood levels and larger dose larger the dose and root of administration root of administration like uh, IV rapidly absorbed drug and uh, rapid IV injection rapid IV injection when we give so there is a more uh, concentration of drug in the blood so slow biotransformation and the LA is not uh, excreted from the body early so slow biotransformation uh, like that slow elimination of drug from the body and the site of injection is very vascular site of injection is highly vascular is another cause of the toxicity highly vascular so there is a chart uh, that shows a toxicity of LA on the system systems like CVS and on the CNS that is given in the recent edition was not given in the early edition so this is a chart given in 
सेवेंथ एडिशन ऑफ मेलामिट सो वी टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ लीडोकिन सो लीडोकिन ब्लड लेवल्स माइक्रोग्राम पर मिली लीटर सो वी हैव टू ड्रॉ इन द वे ऑफ जीरो टू टेन सो जीरो पॉइंट फाइव टू टू माइक्रोग्राम पर मिली लीटर वी विल डिस्कस फर्स्टली ऑफ द सी वी ए सेक्शन सो दीज आर द नॉर्मल ब्लड लेवल्स आफ्टर द नॉर्मल ब्लड लेवल्स आफ्टर इंट्रॉरल इंजेक्शन नो सी वी एस एक्शंस आर विजिबल सो कमिंग टू टू पॉइंट फाइव और टू पॉइंट वन पॉइंट एट टू फाइव to 5 microgram per milliliter we get the anti dysarrhythmic actions anti dysarrhythmic actions of cvs so now from the 5 to the 10 microgram per milliliter we find some ecg alterations we find some ecg alterations we have myocardial uh, dip, uh, depression we have peripheral vaso dilation so this is uh, 5 to 10 microgram per milliliter now coming to the cns system uh, 0.5 till 4 microgram per milliliter we get anti convulsant actions we get anti convulsant actions 0.5 to 4 microgram per milliliter and from 4.5 to 7 from 4.5 concentration to 7 we have cns depression that manifest as excitation in the toxicity we have to remember that excitation occurs first then occurs the depression so cns depression uh, manifests uh, manifestation as excitation or the followed by the excitation and the, from the 7.5 till 10 milligram a uh, microgram per milliliter we have cns depression that is manifest as tonic clonic seizures tonic clonic seizures so after 10 10 plus we have intensive myocardial depression we have cardiac arrest and in this we have generalized cns depression or the respiratory muscles contract we have respiratory depression also uh, some important features like uh, we, uh, the patient the first sign uh, is of the toxicity of la is that patient becomes talkative patients become talkative during the procedure and he feels irritated he feels agitated and the excitation is followed by the depression so how we can manage so it is by this p a b and c p that is the uh, position of the patient and uh, basically terminate the dental procedure and a maintaining the airway b uh, maintaining the breathing of the uh, patient and c is circulation then d the definitive management so we can also give anticonvulsant drug Uh, we can give the anticonvulsant drug like midazolam or the most preferred drug diazepam or can we can administer the oxygen for the reversal of toxicity uh, it decreases the chances of conversion uh, this is all about the systemic complications or the toxicity of